H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Good evening, everyone. Uh, um, I'm here to give you some basic information about uh, business analysis course. Uh, before to that, people, um, let me introduce you myself. Uh, my name is uh, Shah, and I've been working in IT for almost 16 years now. And most of the time, I've been working as a business analyst and as a project manager. And to talk about my training experience, I have close to seven years of experience as a business analyst trainer and as a project management trainer. To talk about project management, I teach PMP and uh, CA PM certification. And talking about my education people, I'm an MBA graduate from San Jose State, California. I do also hold a PMP certification since July 2008. It has been almost seven years now. I've been working as certified PMP based project manager. Okay. And before I proceed, people, let me take a minute to talk about the company. Of course, by now everybody understands the name of the company that is H2K Infosys. Well, people, we are an e-verified business based in Atlanta, Georgia. We do have a very good presence in North America, especially US and Canada. We do also have a presence in European and Asian countries too. As a matter of credibility, we are an e-verified company. And we do provide uh, worldwide service in uh, IT training and uh, IT consulting. Okay, we provide almost all courses in IT. People, of course, you can check the website. Of course, people amongst them, the most popular would be QA, BA, .NET, Java. Of course, many others. You can check yourself. And people, these are the clients that we are associated with. So here, you definitely get to see some promising clients like Wells Fargo, Verizon, Sony, Bank of America, AT&T, Home Depot, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Citigroup, and many more. So these are the clients that we are, that we are associated with. Okay. So people, um, so today I'm here to give you some basic information about business analysis course. As part of that, we will see who is a business analyst is. We will see roles and responsibility of a BA. We will look into course curriculum. We'll try to understand career path of a business analyst. We'll do a comparison between BA jobs with other jobs in IT. And uh, we'll try to understand schedule of the training. And people, very importantly, I would like to take questions, of course, at last. Okay. So this would be uh, the different things that we will be covering in today's class. Okay. So to get started, let's start with the question, who is a business analyst? Well, people, you see the definition. It says that a business analyst is one who acts as a liaison between business team and technical team. Let me bring the definition for you people. So this is what the definition of business analyst says. That is, business analyst is one who acts as a liaison between business team and technical team. Okay. People also, you see a small little diagram which uh, gives you some more the idea about uh, what exactly the business analyst does. People, anyways, let me elaborate on that. Now, let's say people, if this is an IT department, now, let's say people, if this is an uh, IT uh, department. So when I talk about IT department. We have two different group of people. One group of people are called as the um, business team. The other group of people are called as the technical team. Okay. So in this situation, what happens is you have a guy by the name BA who holds the job title as BA, who acts as a mediator between business team and technical team. That is, on one side you have a business team, on the other side you have a technical team, and he acts as a coordinator, or you can call call it as a mediator, or sometimes also call as liaison. So that's how people we say business analyst job as a management job in a way. Okay, it's not a technical job, people. It's not a technical job, or we can call it as a manager kind of a job. Okay, that is on one side you have business team, on the other side you have technical team. You act as a coordinator most of the time. Okay, so this is what uh, business analyst. Uh, this is where the business analyst is situated, or this is where the business analyst is located in IT. Okay. So people, before I proceed. Let me give you an idea of how this training would be conducted. That is method of the training. Okay. So people, let's say if I have to teach you a topic, what I do is 
first let's say if I have to teach your topic, what I do is first I shall cover the theoretical part of the topic, then I shall cover the uh, practical part of the topic. So when I say practical part of the topic, what I do is I shall cover real-time examples from my side. Okay. Also, people will make you work on a real-time examples from your side. People, uh, when it comes to important topics, what happens is I shall go through. Just a second. Okay. So when it comes to uh, important topics, people, so I shall cover two projects from uh, my side, and people will make you work on. Uh, five projects from your side, okay? Two projects from my side and five projects from your side. So basically people, by the time you complete the course, you will have an, uh, you, you have uh, explored seven different projects, okay? Of course people, everything is based on real time, okay? Right. Also people, for every topic, I'll be telling you a story. People, I know this might sound funny, but believe me, stories are really a very nice way to make you understand the subject. Stories will help you to remember the subject for a really long time. So people, this training would have approximately 27 stories. Okay. So this is the method of the training, people. This is the method of the training. Okay. Right. Now, people, let's understand roles and responsibility of a BA. Again, people, if you remember, just now I told you, for every topic, I have a story. Again, people, this happens to be a very important topic. Again, I have a very nice story for you here. So before going on to the story side of it, I would like to go through the definition. So it says that business analyst is responsible uh, to uh, gather requirements, is responsible to detail requirements, is responsible to document requirements, is responsible to validate requirements in a format that is useful to business team and technical team. Okay, so this is what the BA does. Okay, this is what the BA does. People now, let's understand, let's understand this with the help of a story here. People, in this story, I want to play a role. Let me play the role of a customer people basically let's talk something outside IT let's talk about a restaurant and now let me play the role of a customer here so that is people I'm a customer for a food restaurant let's say people when I go to a restaurant what happens it's quite obvious that a waiter would approach me okay it's quite obvious that a waiter would approach me that let's say people um, this is a waiter Let's say people what it is, he approaches me and he would ask me questions saying what you require. That is, a waiter wants to know what I want to have for lunch. A waiter wants to know what I want to have for meal, what I want to have for dinner, something like that. Okay. Now let's say people this is me. Okay, let's say this is me. Let's say people have ordered for uh, two um, pizza. Let's say I ordered for one uh, sandwich. Let's say I requested extra cheese on the pizza. Let's say I requested extra pepper on the sandwich. Now tell me people what is this in the box? What is this in the box? Maybe people, we can call this as my food order. Maybe we can call this as my food need. Maybe we can call this as my food requirement. Okay. So in that case, people, what is a waiter trying to do here? So we can say that the waiter is trying to um, gather my requirements. I can say that. Okay. People, I have a question for you. I want you to think on that. That is, people, me being a customer, when I was really expressing my requirements, that is when I was orally describing my food requirements, what do you think what a customer does? People you might have observed, he makes note of it. That is, he has a small little notepad what he always carries, and that small little notepad will have three columns. So what happens? In the first column, he would enter the food menu. That is in this case, pizza. That is in this case, sandwich. In the second column, he would enter the quantity. That is two and one. In the third column, he would enter the comments. That is in this case, extra cheese and extra pepper. So tell me people, what exactly is the waiter trying to do here? So well people, we can say that the waiter is trying to organize my requirements. We can say that the waiter is trying to organize my requirements. Organize because if you see here, he has put all the food menu in one column, he has put the quantity in another column, he has put the comments in the third column. So that's how we say the waiter has organized my requirements. So question arises why the waiter has to do this. So well people, the waiter does this so that it is easy for the chef to understand the requirement. So that's the whole point of organizing the requirement. In the meantime, people, we have a word called as detailing. So you know what, people, the word detail and the word organize, they mean the same. So in that case, people, we say 
the waiter has detailed my requirements. Okay, we can say that the waiter has detailed my requirements. Also, people, we can say that the waiter has documented my requirements because this is a documentation in itself. Okay, fine. My last question, people, I want you to think on that. That is, once a waiter gathers, once a waiter details, once a waiter documents, what does he do next? People, if you have observed, he repeats the order. That is, he wants to cross-check. He wants to cross-confirm the requirement what he has taken is correct or not. And that is called as validation of requirements. And once validation is done, he would hand over the requirement to the chef. And what a chef would do, the chef would prepare the food based on the requirements given by the waiter. And later on, this food will be served to the customer. That's me in this case. So this is what the waiter would do. The surprise is the BA would do exactly the same thing. The difference is the BA would gather software requirements from the customer. The BA would detail the software requirements taken from the customer. The BA would document the software requirements. Okay, the uh, BA would validate the software requirements. And after validation of software requirements, you would hand out this requirement to a developer. People definitely by now you know you should have heard about developer. Okay, so what a developer does? So the developer would prepare the software based on the requirements given by the PA. Did you notice something people? The chef and the developer, they do the same kind of a job. That is the chef would prepare the food based on the requirements given by the waiter. The same way the developer would prepare the software based on the requirements given by the BA. You get the point, people? So people, let's take a small example here. So let's say here we have a person by the name Sam. Here we have a person by the name Sam. Let's say Sam, okay, he, uh, he runs a travel agency, okay? Let's say he runs a travel agency, okay? Okay, travel agency, okay, travel agency. Let me be short, okay, fine. Now people, he wants a website, so what it is? So definitely approaches to some IT company. Let's say this is the IT company. Okay. So let's say people, this is me. I work as a BA for this IT company. So my job would be to talk to Sam. So that, that is in this case, Sam is my client. Talk to Sam and understand the requirement. That is, I have to gather requirements from him. So requirements can be, I would like to know from him what color website he wants. What are the different tabs he wants on the website? What are the different buttons he wants on the website? Okay, and what should be the color of the tab? What should be the color of the button? Does he want a login functionality? If he wants, where should it come? Okay, does he want to take payments from his customer? Okay, so that is he, does he want the feature of payments? Okay, does he want a feature like chat, etc. People, I'm just taking this as a very small example. So this is called as requirements, okay? This is one type of a requirement, people. So once you have this requirements, once you have this requirements, people see the way the waiter would be using a template of this kind. The waiter would be using a template of this kind, which has three columns. Even a BA has a template called a use case template. Using that templates, a BA would organize the requirements. He would uh, prepare a documentation for that. He would validate for that, and he would hand out the requirement to the developer. People, this actually gives you a very high level picture of exactly what a BA does. So what happens, people, once the course begins, I shall make you understand the different techniques to gather, different techniques to detail, different techniques to document, different techniques to validate, people. So this is what you'll be seeing in the course most of the time. Okay, this is what we'll be seeing in the course most of the time. Okay, fine. So people, the bottom line is, what a BA does, G, D, D, V, gather, detail, document, and validate. Remember always. Gather requirements, detailed requirements, document requirements, and validate requirements. People at the initial t stages, I want you to remember this waiter story. Being a beginner, uh, this waiter story will help you to recall the roles and responsibility of a BA. Okay? Fine. So let's move on to the next one, people. So well, people, I want to give you a very high level uh, picture about the different modules that will be covered in this course. So here, people, if you see business analysis, of course, people, this happens to be the uh, main module. And people, project management will be covered. So when I say project management, it would be PMP-based project management. Okay. Software testing basics will be covered. Healthcare domain will be covered. I know some of you might be wondering, what is this healthcare doing in IT? Well, people, it is called as domain. Of course, 
once the course begins, you will get to know how this domain and BA go hand in hand. You will understand that. Okay. People being a beginner, it is not required. Being a beginner, it is not required, but people, we want you to have some extra skills. Also, finance domain will be covered. I know many of you might be having questions saying, you know what, I want to work as a BA. For me, just BA module is enough. Okay, why should I learn project management? Why should I learn software testing? Why should I learn healthcare domain? Why should I learn finance domain? Well, people, here yeah, the point is the company wants you to be very competitive. So keeping that into consideration, we have added this additional four modules. Also, the company wants you to have edge who are students coming from other training institute. Okay, fine. So people also, I see sometimes I get questions saying, should we pay the fees separately to all the five modules? No, you don't do that. All what you do is, we just pay the fees for BA module. Okay, so once you pay the fees for the BA module, so this additional four modules, what you see here, will come as a package with no cost. Yes, we don't charge you for uh, project management or software testing or healthcare domain or, or finance domain for that matter. We give this as complimentary. People definitely, it adds up intangible asset to the company. It's a goodwill, you know, goodwill that a company will gain. Okay. So, well, people, of course, I'll give you a detailed uh, elaboration of syllabus at the end of the uh, session, people. Okay. Let's move to the next slide. So people here, I know many of you might be having questions saying, so let's say if I start a career as a business analyst now, where will I see myself in the next five years or 10 years? People, this chart, this diagram what you have here, this will give you a kind of an idea. So initially people at this training level, so these are the different course that we will be focusing on, like I mentioned in the previous slide, that is healthcare, um, BA, project management, software testing, healthcare domain and finance domain. So with this combination people, okay, so you can, you can either start as a BA, you can either start as a BA junior project manager or either you can start as a BA QA people. By now, okay, you could you should have realized the essence of this combination of syllabus. People, this actually makes you eligible for so many different jobs. For so many different jobs. Okay? Fine. This happens to be the first level people. Okay. So um so one doesn't matter whether you start as a BA or BA QA or BA junior project manager. Okay, but the next level would be project manager job. This happens to be the second level. Okay, so once you start working as a project manager, so you grow yourself uh, as a program manager. After that, uh, you grow yourself as a um, portfolio manager. Let's say people, if you are really very ambitious, you can make make your way into um, management also. You can make your way into management also. People, this is your career path. Okay, people, I need not tell you the pay packages are very high. It's quite common. People, let's, let's talk about any industry for that matter. Always managers and managements are the one who, who gets highly paid. It happens the same thing here also. If you check, you can check yourself people. The pay package for a project manager is somewhere between 120 to 160K. And for program manager it is more than 180K. And portfolio manager it is more than 200K and so on. Okay. So people also, the, the, the thing what I like about this is you have a growth. You have a growth. People, there's so many jobs in IT. Also outside IT you don't have a growth. But here you see a tremendous growth. That's the thing what I like uh, more about this BA and project management jobs. Okay, fine. Let's see what we have next. So well people, I, I would like to um, uh, give you a job comparison between BA jobs and other jobs in IT. So people, you can also do yourself. Just go to any uh, job portal. So job portal means you have Monster, you have Dice, you have Career Builder. Okay, just type the jobs in IT and you'll see the numbers. Okay, I've taken a, a screenshot people just to help you. But what I'm trying to say is you can also do yourself. Once I'm done with the class, you can also do yourself. Okay, fine. So people here, when I search for .NET jobs, okay, let's say uh, when I search for .NET jobs, so these are the number of jobs what I found. That is 1,550 jobs. Okay, very clear. Okay, very clear. Okay, fine. So likewise, when I searched for Java developer job, so people, these are the number of jobs what I found, 1,900, okay, 1,900, okay, right. So um, when I did the same thing for SAP, so people, when I did the same thing for SAP, so you see, I found only 95 jobs, okay. Now let's see people, how, how many jobs does this BA have, okay. Let's see how many jobs does this BA have, okay. 
people when I search for business analyst job, the number of jobs what I found is 10,427. Now a very big question comes, how come you have so many jobs in BA? People have an answer for that. Just watch this. Okay, so let's say people, if it's a Java project. So let's say for a typical Java project, you need a project manager to manage a project. You need a business analyst to manage requirements. You need a Java architect, you need a Java double. Fine. Let's say if it's a .NET project. Again, you need a project manager, you need a business analyst, you need a .NET architect, you need a .NET developer. Let's say some X technology, you know, right? You, you, you um, keep getting new technologies, okay? So let's say people, some X technology comes up after two years. Again, people, for that X technology, you need a project manager, you need a BA, you need an X technology architect, you need an X technology developer, okay? So what do you observe here? What did you observe here? People, BA and project management are the common jobs for all the projects. So that's how you see so many jobs in BA. Also people, you will see that many jobs in project management also. Okay, so people, this is a very good uh, example for you to understand how come you have so many jobs in BA. Okay, fine, fine. All right, people, let's talk about the batch schedule. People will be having uh, three batches a day. We'll be having three batches a day. We'll be having one batch in the morning, 10 a.m. EST. We'll be having another batch in the evening, 8 p.m. EST. We'll be having another batch in the night, 10.30 p.m. EST. People will be having three batches a day. So people normally the days are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So let's say, let that be for 10 a.m. or the 8 p.m. It's the same, okay? Uh, for that matter, 10.30 is also the same. People, the fun part about this is, all the three batches will run in parallel. So what does that mean? Let's say people Tuesday, in the morning batch, let's say, I did teach you a topic called as cost management as part of the name batch. It means the same topic will be again repeated in the evening 8 p.m. It means the same topic will be again repeated for the third time in the night 10.30 p.m. batch. So it means I teach you a topic three times a day. We teach you a topic three times a day. So the only reason is I believe in revision. And people, we insist you to attend all the three batches all the three batches. If not three, at least two. I've seen some people, what they do is, they attend uh, 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. Some people, what they do is, they attend 10 a.m. and 10.30. Or some people, what they do is, they attend 8 p.m. and 10.30. People, put your effort to attend revision classes that will really help you. And keeping that one aside, people, this gives you the flexibility of the schedule, people. Um, so let's say, um, one day come in the morning, next day can come in the evening, next day can come in the night. Let's say Friday night, you have some something planned. So you can come in the morning. You can keep shifting the batches, people. Okay, it does not make any difference because anyways, the topic covered is the same in all the three times. People, this also gives you the flexibility of the schedule. Okay, so there's some additional uh, information, people, what I would like to give you. So well, people, the total duration of the training would be two months, okay? And people, let's say, um, once you register, my phone number will be shared with you. That is, if you have any question, people, this would be the calling time. Of course, three batches will be conducted apart from that. This is an additional calling time, what we keep. So let's say if you have any question related to the subject, you can always call at this time and discuss with us. Of course, the days would be from Monday to Friday. Okay. So we will help you for interview preparation. So what happens once this two months of course is done, after two months, the interview course uh, preparation will start. Okay. And so that you can keep attending uh, unless and until you get a job. And this is a one-time enrollment. People, that is once you enroll, you can repeat this course as many times you want for your lifetime. You can repeat this course 10 times, 20 times, or 30 times, as many times you want. It is just one-time registration or one-time uh, uh, paying the fees, okay? So also people, we will provide job support. That is, let's say once you get a job, people, let's say if you need any help, people, uh, we will help you with that. But the condition is again, you should be calling me between uh, 1.30 to 12.30, sorry, 1.30 to 2.30 only. Okay. Also, people, we will help you with the resumes also. Okay. I will review your resume. Okay. Right. Right. Now, uh, people, uh, so we have one last thing to cover. We have one last thing to cover. Okay. Right. So, people, I would like to um, uh, give you an overview of the uh, Syllabus, okay, let me walk you through the syllabus, okay? Just give me a second. 
So people, well, uh, this is the website for H2K Infosys. People, um, I would uh, recommend you to go uh, go to the website. You'll get to see so many different things. We have our own uh, job portal also, and uh, people, we have forums. Okay, there are so many things what you get to see in uh, a website. People. In the meantime, people, let me walk you through the um, syllabus. Okay, so people, of course, overview of business analysis that happens to be very basic one that will be covered. Also, people, um, I will make you understand some slangs and jargons, which is definitely very much essential. Okay. Also, people, analysis, it is one of the most important uh, topic, people, that will be covered. And UML, okay, so people, it is about diagrams. Even that will be covered. If you see here, it says activity diagram, sequence diagram, context diagram, use case diagram. It will be covered. Modeling tool, people, uh, there's a tool called Visio, which is very much essential. Uh, that will be taught. And in fact, we will be installing the tool for you. And people, of course, requirement uh, gathering technique. People, uh, just now I mentioned in the story that you are responsible to gather requirements. So there are different methods to gather requirements. That is what we will see here. And JAT session, people, it's a kind of a meeting uh, in which requirements are gathered. We'll see that. And people, this is DLC. It, it actually tells you um, the different steps that you have to follow in order to make up a uh, software. And there are different methods in SDLC. We'll see that. And documentation, people, there are different types of document that you should be aware of. We will go through that. And people, I told you, right, um, project management will be covered. That too, very specifically, I told you, PMP and CAPM based uh, project management will be covered. Okay, so people, this is a very important module. Okay, this will give you a very good edge once you start selling yourself in job market. So as part of this people, so um, the first lesson would be project management framework, which is the introduction to project management. Then we have a lesson called scope management. Then we have a lesson called time management. People time management happens to be very important uh, lesson. So this is where you'll understand different techniques to estimate the duration of time. So people we have a technique called as one point estimation, we'll see that. We have a technique called as three point estimation, we'll see that. Okay, we have a technique called as analogs estimation, we'll see that. So when it comes to three point estimation, people, this is something that we use in real time. Okay. So here people will see different types of formulas. It's not that easy, people. It's very uh, lengthy to really do an estimation using three-point estimations. We'll, we'll do that, everything, okay? So that is, we have a PERT formula. Uh, we have, uh, there's a way to calculate EAD, we'll see that. We have to calculate standard deviation, we'll do that. We have to calculate range, we'll see that. So it means there is some mathematics involved in this, okay? Also, people, um, uh, we will go through the cost management, quality management, Human resource management, communication management, risk management, procurement management. Okay, when it comes to healthcare domain, so my focus would be on health insurance. Health insurance. Under that, you have claim process, EDI transaction one, EDI transaction two. Then comes the software testing module. Okay. Also, people, um, this finance module. People, we have recently added this finance module. Okay. Recently, I think last month we have added this uh, finance module. People. People, I want you to check the uh, uh, you know uh, syllabus, okay, online before you really enroll with us, okay. And this is the uh, manual testing part as well, okay. The syllabus is very huge, people, okay. Um, I want you to spend time on this, okay. Right. Okay. So well, people, um, I'm done uh, talking from my side. Okay, now uh, it's your turn. In the meantime, people, so for registration, let's say this is the number what you have to call. So this is the number what you have to call, or this is the email ID what you have to contact. If you are in US, let's say if you are in UK, this is the number what you have to uh, call, and uh, this is the email ID, people. Okay. Also, people, um, this is what I see in each and every demo session. Before you really enroll with us. I want you to check the reviews about the company. People, are, I always take pride in saying that we have excellent reviews from many, many years. Okay. People, I want you to check the reviews before you really enroll with us. Thanks once again for taking time uh, quoting my demonstration, people. I hope you liked it. And people, we are starting a new batch starting from Tuesday. Okay. People, it will be a question and answer session, um, which will start in a minute. Thank you so much. Thank you.